They're learning analytics, the good, the bad, and also the ugly, because there are some ugly things that we must be aware of. So, this is something we said in our uh, editorial for the learning analytics track two years ago, that learning analytics is not a trend anymore, it is a must in education. So, we have come to think about that. Uh, and we ended up asking ourselves, but is it really a must in education, especially uh, when the concepts of learning analytics, even though we have a, de a, de a clear definition, it's not quite clear. Uh, we're positive that it's still must in education, but we have to consider all the good things, the bad things, and the ugly things that we hear and learn about learning analytics. First of all, uh, as you may know, the idea of learning analytics comes from the translation or transposition of the idea of business analytics to learning environments, to education. Uh, and that brings us to the idea of uh, analyzing big data. And as we've been uh, doing research on learning analytics these years, we have seen that uh, research on learning analytics shares some characteristics of big data, which are volume, variety, and velocity. And from those characteristics, we find uh, some of the good, bad, and the ugly things of learning analytics. First of all, the good things. Um, we have to think that uh, the volume of velocity, both uh, big data and research and learning analytics, we have uh, in the past four or five years lots of research and learning analytics on very different contexts, very different technologies. So let's say that we're building a large corpus of knowledge, even though it's not structured yet. That's uh, some kind of problem. And especially, we must think about the variety. I mean, we use the very different data sources, very different analysis techniques, algorithms, different visualizations, tools, context, and very different type of, uh, types of users. With higher education, primary education, uh, secondary education, etc. Uh, but then there are some bad, uh, bad things about that. First of all, re uh, regarding volume and velocity, it's been hard to keep the pace with uh, constant updates on the field. Even though, uh, and even more, we have uh, contributions from education data mining, uh, learning analytics as such, academic analytics, lots of uh, uh, a large volume of research which is rapidly being published. And also the variety, and this is a big problem that we'll see today during uh, the different presentations. Because we're creating lots of fragmentation. Uh, Learning analytics is not, it's not one monolithic thing. It's uh, lots of different kinds of research under the umbrella of learning analytics. Also, there are generally uh, particular experiences. So it's hard to generalize the, the results of those research. Uh, some of the data have not been captured in some research, but it's uh, captured in others. Uh, it, and it's difficult and will uh, we would really like to talk about this with all our presenters and the audience about how to translate our research to other different contexts. That, but that will be one question that we'll solve. Um, and also there are obvious things. First of all, is that every year we see lots of contributions which are mainly technology-based or data-centric or data-driven studies. Uh, and we still lack and contributions from the education field. So we will, we would really like to know how you, you all plan to incorporate uh, uh, pedagogy, uh, instructional methodology, and all the theory from uh, educational research to your uh, to your research. Uh, so our summary from all the contributions you are about uh, hear about is that. There are lots of confusion, many, many different things, lots of uh, variety, and this has been intentional this year, because we want to show the large variety of what is considered learning analytics, and also that we lack those educational perspectives.